Project Ito was an award-winning sci-fi novelist taken away in the infancy of his bright career. This work became part of Noita Min A's movie project, a trilogy of movies set each at a different studio. Today we're talking about Harmony at 4C. Now they got some legendary talent on this. We've got the returning Michael Ayers and Takashi Nakamura who is one of the inspirations behind the creator of the said studio. There's a ton of potential here, but I can also see it as an example of a compromised production and the caveats that come with that. I've always been a great admirer of Nakamura's work. Shinji Kumura introduced us at our first meeting and I actually had him sign a DVD of Tree of Palm. So by the time Nakamura was invited to co-direct, we were quite behind schedule I didn't have the luxury of planning how to divide our tasks. It was kind of a shotgun marriage, to be honest, but I still think he's a genius. Michael was approached first for Genocidal Organ by Fuji Television. He declined though, as it wasn't really his thing. He's not a huge fan of that sort of military stuff, but he was a huge fan of Harmony, a novel he'd spent years trying to make into a live action film. So there was a bit of reshuffling and boom, Ayers is now the lead of the Harmony project. However, that came at a cost. They had a year and a half to animate a whole two hour movie. Barely nine months on the script and pre-production. When you think back to Tekon, they had basically double the full production time for what was a shorter film. And they struggled to hit that deadline. In Tekon, we had a lot of time to experiment. That's why it looks the way it does. We got to do anything we wanted to do. There's definitely a lot of growing pains here and they're apparent from the first action set piece. For one, it's quite standard as far as these action scenes go in movies. The movie itself doesn't actually have a lot of action sequences either, so I thought they might have, you know, tried to make it really pop, but uh, I think this is just the issue of the situation they were in. The issues come around sort of with the unevenness, let's say, of the CGI in the film. I'd say it's distracting that they have shots of 2D people and jump to 3D, back to 2D, and... I don't think it should be really because it's not like Michael isn't good at this. Like he's literally very prolific and honestly one of the greats at CG merging in seamless ways if you look at like Tacon Kin Street. And I, I still say there's there's a lot of good stuff in here. The vehicles and objects are definitely an improvement over like the prior anime movie. But when it comes to the model of the characters once again, yeah, Forcey just isn't up to the task in this instance, especially when it's in the forefront of the shot. It's confusing why specifically this shot out of all the surrounding ones is CGI instead of 2D, but the answer is obviously time motive. Because there are definitely shots that excel in this instance. This isn't a CGI's bad take. It's always definitely been part of Forcey's work, it's just that they're not quite as experienced as some elements. And when you're against the clock, it just isn't going to help you. They are overstretching their capabilities basically. We had to use a lot of CG computer graphics just because we didn't have a lot of time to execute along compared to the traditional animation. We were trying to do the best with what we had. That's part of it. The other part is working with a different group of people, different art directors, different computer graphics staff, and then the staff at Nakamura and I have different tastes. Okay, yeah, so, so there's some like awkwardly placed CGI. What else is new in anime? Well, in terms of the art direction, there's a quite artificial look, which is definitely an intentional decision. I find it a bit tiring on the eyes though, garish to say the least with all the synthetic like pink bolstering worlds and it's pushed further when it's contrasted with the sort of more natural hand painted backgrounds. My issue is that we do spend a lot of time in these more artificial elements and they kind of get boring to look at. You know, for a sci-fi setting it isn't particularly um, awe inducing. It's very m monotone, kind of like monotonous and a lot of it looks quite similar. And I guess that could be intentional, but it doesn't make it for like an interesting settings, especially when most of the movies is just characters talking in those locations. So they really need to stand out in some way to give you something. It's only there's a lot of like camera motion, just like in a glow and a soft blow happening around. Though a lot of that's kind of minor. I would say I have more problem with the way the camera is used. It's kind of tacky. There's a lot of swaying and rotations because of the 3D setting. They're really trying to push that. But just for like no particular reason. A lot of it is just to sort of to fill time. And if I had to guess, Nakamura's animators at times just couldn't keep up with the amount of cuts they needed to do. So they found ways to like move around and avoid having to animate characters for specific shots. I, I kind of sympathize with them because it's not necessarily always the easiest way to find new ways to relay characters going back and forth, sitting down, giving the same sort of exposition of their philosophies. In that instance, Harmony is, a, is pretty safe in its uh, style there. Though there are certainly moments where it might m mix it up a little bit. The online communication is pretty unique. 
uh, especially the way it shows uh, the characters in this new dimension We're using these fractal effects, a sort of low poly model. I, I think that's a fun distraction from the usual standard way we see everything. Though I feel it could have also been done without a lot of the, the more like obnoxious zooms and moving of the camera. Moreover, while the talking sequences are not revolutionary, the interpersonal flashbacks do show what Nakamura is like best at. The character acting, the close-ups, the intimate motions between these people. That's really wonderful bits of motion, quite frankly. I feel for it because like there's something that Air says about like as a director, you never really know if you're making the right decisions, especially when you're moving this fast. And you've got two different people with two very different like styles come together in one way, especially when they have very strong style. But let's get really into the story. It's kind of hard to approach it since the nature of this being like a pure sci-fi premise, there's a bit to unpack, I guess. So the Harmony Get takes a while for the plot to start going. It spends a lot of time world building since it's a world where people don't get sick or age as much, but they live in like a complete nanny state. And to quote them, it, it kills you with kindness. Well, the only rebellion for a teenage girl is that basically to decide if they can live or die. In a world affected by a pandemic, I, I could certainly see there being like a worse way to live and having the biggest killers of all time being no longer a concern. As long as you live in the right place, that is. Rich countries. And that's kind of underexplored in the movie about how the concerns of like the, the narrative are maybe not always about free will as it is about, you know, powerful companies having that much control over your life in the name of convenience, even when they get it wrong and that can lead to much worse situations. And it's not like they don't bring it up at all. Imperialism is brought up by the outside nations in the first scene, you know, saying that what they're doing is effectively fake humanitarianism. Well, the only way to protect themselves from illness is that they basically have to buy the tech to create the vaccines themselves. And I, I will say, like, on one level, Ito does understand this stuff as he wrote this novel being bedridden with cancer, taking chemotherapy. So like, I totally could understand that um, this is probably a world that, like, he, he may have in some ways been attracted to. And with the idea of the society that kills you with kindness, it, it is quite underexplored in the movie. There's certainly one level where you can see the formality and all the rules... Um, are not necessarily separate from like the modern gin and pan setting. The character angst about being completely unrelated to her home country, the boring fakeness and the acceptance of um, it's not something that she can go back to after seeing the world. Like I think you can see, certainly empathize with that position of it all. On the other hand, the main character almost fetishizes cultures that live outside of the tools that give them such privileges and the ones that make sure that they don't have to worry about death, uh, which is not, not great. <laughs> the general coercion of the story isn't like gone into detail, but the director knows it's there and has mentioned it in an interview. In our modern world, this means uh, giving ourselves up to corporations. We are putting a lot of faith on one company or system. And as you can see in the movie, that was a terrible idea. Ultimately, Harmony is about the conspiracy level plot stuff that takes main, like, main focus. The whole setup that you get to is really fantastic, quite frankly. How blunt it is, how it's out of nowhere, it really hits you. with like the conflict of mystery. It's just too bad that it doesn't really bring the sort of detective angle um, to the forefront in an interesting way. It kind of relates its information to you quite bluntly and flat. Like all the information you need to know is kind of just thrown at you very quickly in a way where like the mystery or the detective side of this, the plot basically falls apart very fast. I mean, it's so blunt you could, you could <laughs> half believe it was like Deus Ex or something. The Great Death is a man-made virus. Everyone up to the president is at UNATCO's mercy as long as UNATCO controls the supply of Ambrosia. You believe that? We have proof. We need to get the Ambrosia to Hong Kong. Her to Tracer Tong? He can help us synthesize it ourselves. Blackmail of the US government could not possibly escape the notice of the United Nations. Me memes aside, this is actually closer to like a, again, Metal Gear from Kojima. And the setup, that doesn't really surprise me because Ito was a close friend and was inspired originally to write fan fiction from his franchises like Snatcher and Metal Gear, and later on actually got to write the novelization for Metal Gear Solid 4. The whole plot screams Snatcher, and that sort of detective cyberpunk mystery at one point. And the type of story where characters unload their deep-seated qualms about the world while you gawk at them, add some sort of military political cover-ups, for a good measure, is definitely classic Kojima. Now, I read the original novel to see if this was like an issue more so with adaptation or like how close it follows the novel. And it's, it's pretty close, actually, all things considered. 
Although, like, the, the book certainly has a lot more nuance that the movie lacks. To quote it, your lifeism isn't just new software, it's the same old machinery. There's more of a description about what is wrong with the culture, like how it bans violent depictions, and it goes into the issues with the conformity, and how it's mandated down to, like, how much you can weigh and the cleanliness of your skin, and that you're basically just public property. The movie follows the direction closely with some minor adjustments for uh, gravitas, Although the issue I think ultimately is just that the book is not very easy to transfer into the, the medium of m movie making, especially the way it's written. There's a lot of like little quirks that just would not transfer over. You kind of have to be comfortable acknowledging that the movie is just one possible interpretation and that you are diluting the original with your own DNA and hoping that you sympathize something interesting from that combination. Obviously, you're not overriding anything in the source. Michael and the team respected the source material. The cut and corners of the movie came from the circumstance that, like, there's just no control they could have had over that. Even stuff like how the director had no ability to change the post-production of the movie. So when it comes to scoring, sound design, dubbing, translation, it was kind of left up in the air in a way that he might not have been as satisfied with in the end. And after all, he did have a lot to do with the digital effects. So what can you do? I'd say this is a problem with some of the translation, which can be kind of awkwardly hilarious at times. Our tits. Our pussies. Our wombs. These are ours. They belong to us. And that's unfortunate because, you know, if you, you literally have a translator in front of you. Like, Michael has translated several different mangas. He knows both languages. He's very fluent. To be fair, some of the stuff is in the book, but the way it's presented is through HTML code, so it was never actually said by the characters. What's said instead is... This body, these tits, this ass, this uterus, these are mine. So it's not 100% off, but uh, there is, yeah, there are certainly parts where um, <laughs> the way it's dubbed and uh, acted is almost common of call, when it's certainly not the intention. So uh, l let me end this on a positive note. There's a ton to like about the final scene and sprinkled throughout the movie. What we have here is that the idea of a woman that had to fight for her ability to have free will in the most depraved of situations and finds a complete lack of it disgusting. And that's kind of where the premise comes from. But it's turned around when she loses her free will again and wants to remove it from the rest of the world in a, a countering a effort. She becomes a slave to the very thing she hated originally. Yet the book kind of has a different interpretation where in the end, the main character, Tuan, refuses to let her live out of spite, which is not quite the same as the movie, which is more sympathetic. While these scenes are very pretty, very strong art direction, compositioning, and animation, I can't really say I'm with the antagonists in terms of their speech. It's a very long debate sort of thing going on there. And I don't think that there's any like counter given to it. It's, again, one-sided conversation there. But I, I gotta give the credit to the, you know, the art direction here. And that it has one of the few really iconic musical beats in it towards the ending. I can't really say I'd recommend Harmony. There's absolutely stuff there that I think is worthwhile and definitely some highlights. And, you know, your mileage may vary. I'd say that reading the source material first might be a way to tell if it's worth it for you because it's only 300 pages. I'd say the movie is a mixed bag of ups and downs, but it does highlight that even if you have the best talent and passion in the world, a project can still stumble. Hello there, we have a cat over here. And you have just watched a 4 Semba or a 4C month video. Now there's supposed to be a bunch of them. We're supposed to be releasing them every day after all. And at the end of the month we should have a full expanded revised version for everyone to see. If you want to keep checking them out, there should be a playlist probably on the screen I'm guessing. And to thank everyone who has helped support me during this period of time. It's been a little bit hectic to try and get these videos out. I need to thank all my patrons who get exclusive content. I got a lot of stuff earlier, etc., etc. Jay, Steven's mum, Takeyuki Suzuki, Alex Moriarty, Paul, Sub Sofa. I hope I'm saying that right. And Chunks, among all these other people, I've had to expand. I, we're in the editing dock right now, but I've had to expand the screen because I knew there was more space I needed to get all the names on there. So I've changed the angle slightly. Uh, yeah, thanks for everyone for their support. Check out tomorrow for the next video. I'll catch.